what I was saying earlier about things that people don't want to talk about. Um, there's like a stigma against it where some people just feel so uncomfortable. And I feel like you are comfortable enough to bring these things to the table, to say these conversations because people need to be educated by them. So with what your, your statement just was, you know, for people who are trying to better themselves, grow every day or whatever, and, uh, you know, just try to really expand on, you know, being a more well-rounded person, what should they say? Because obviously there is a condition. And um, not everyone is all, is automatically privy to, you know, the next best way to address something, uh, especially when you have to unlearn behaviors that you've been taught your whole come you know time coming up and revert back to what you know is usually what people get to when they feel uncomfortable. So um, obviously there are better words than that. Uh, is is um, challenged a proper one? Yeah, challenged, um, underdeveloped. Uh, I'm not an expert mm-hmm. on specifically that word, but there's no, no matter what it is, if a lot of it has to do with the delivery mm-hmm. and the intention if, behind yeah, it. Yeah. And the, the, and the intention. And if you're going to say something because you're just insensitive, then, uh, and then don't get upset when people call you out on it. Mm-hmm. Cause you know what, you know what you did. We're, we're not, we're not children. We're we're most of us are adults and we know right from wrong. So when you say things and then get corrected, don't don't be, you know, Billy badass because Mm -hmm. because somebody corrected you just understand like, okay, yeah, that was that was that was fucked up. I should probably just revisit that and and not say it again. And uh, I only bring that question up because I feel like uh, sometimes the listener has to be able to separate what they hear the host do and say because they have to remember that the host is simply that. You are hosting. You are the one who uh, isn't necessarily putting thoughts into the, uh, or opinions, I should say, not thoughts, putting opinions into the product. So um, when they're hearing episodes like you've been rolling out recently where you spoke with Spark who focuses on drug addiction, it's not the most glamorous thing. When you speak to uh, Shantae, an advocate for autism, you know, it's not necessarily a, a comfortable glamorous thing but there is positivity in it because of what they do so uh i wish i could remember the word that i'm trying to think of but it's, it's essentially just it, uh, it explains that um these are the things that yeah it's un- uncomfortable for you to hear or speak about but it's necessary there yeah. needs to be that uh, that being addressed and for people who may you know think that you're harping on certain things i want to make sure that they're able to see the difference between the purpose that you're doing and how it may come across that you, you know, someone might even consider you being newsy or asking too personal of questions. Yeah. I think for me, it, it goes back to, yes, this podcast is about positivity. It's about highlighting positive news, positive people doing positive things and organizations. But ultimately it's also about problem solving. Um, you, we can't, we can't just, like I said, but like, like we just spoke previously, we can't have those feel good pieces, the, the distraction pieces. We there's there's so many problems in the world and we can sit here and bitch and complain all day about those problems. There is not a shortage of that on the news. There is not a shortage of that in conversation. But what there is a shortage of is what are some of the solutions we can come up with? I think I said it prior on a different podcast. Um you know, instead of asking children what they want to be when they grow up, you ask them, what problems do you want to solve when you grow up? And this way you change the way they think. You change the way, you know, it's not all about money. It's about what can you do to impact the world on a positive note? You know, what, you know, what's one problem you always see? Hunger, homelessness. Always. Okay, cool. What can we do to solve those problems? Okay, this kid decides he's going to be... um I don't know. He's going to develop a, a new crop that everybody can eat and it's nutritious, you know, no matter what it is, changing those mindsets instead of a, a capitalistic, like how much money you don't want to, do you want to make? Oh, I want to be the president. Like, no, what problems do you want to solve? It's like, Oh, what problems are there? And mm-hmm. when you have that thinking, it's like, damn, there are a lot of problems and it may be daunting, but we can only control what we can control. And, and, and influence, Influence is something that we definitely can control, and that's pretty much what you're doing. You're influencing people to uh, think beyond what they perceive, think beyond what they were introduced to. And uh, what you just spoke on, I actually really liked it because uh, you mentioned that, you know, that's not, and you mentioned this multiple times before, 
don't necessarily ask them what do you want to be when you grow up because usually you're only introduced to so many different roles. Everyone wants to be a cop or a doctor, et cetera. But uh, I had this conversation with my older brother the other day, and he said something that was really I really liked. So I actually just wanted to go find it where he mentioned um, – like in, in today's society, we value labor so much where people are grateful for the opportunity to work, where it's they're not necessarily grateful for the opportunity to be appreciated. And that's one of the things that is, the, you know, a problem in, in, the, in the world. Where's a problem you would like to fix? You know, what people value. And you were kind of harping on that as well when you said uh, people's intentions with money and uh, how, you know, the rappers of today can make it seem like one thing is more important than the other. But people aren't valuing love and time. And, uh, you know, just just a genuine effort that people put into other people. So that influence is something that goes a long way. And I'm sure you feel uh, rewarded in a sense. And, you know, obviously you don't do it for your personal reward. But when you deal with the block is back, it refreshes you when you come back out to San Diego after a year. You mentioned that that was the school bag drive was one of the better times you've had recently. So would you say that um, this influence it comes back around like a full a full circle benefit for you as well as the people that you are speaking with. Oh yeah, um, and even you know entertaining for the people listening. Yeah, for sure. I always say I'm selfishly selfless because me doing these things to help other people in a in a sense is kind of selfish because I like the way it makes me feel. Not necessarily. I mean, I love the fact that we're helping people, but I love the feeling of helping people. So I'm kind of, you know, giving myself, uh, I guess it is coming full circle. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm doing it in a selfish way because I like the way it makes me feel when I help other people, which I don't think is a bad thing. It's I, not. I it, think people always say like. I think what's good for you is good for me type of thing. Yeah. I, I shared a, I shared a while back an article on Instagram and the person wrote, well, they gave all that money because it's a tax write off. It's like, OK, cool. They still gave away all that money. Mm-hmm. Like I, it doesn't. What does that matter? They didn't have to do it. They didn't no have to force. There's no guns to their head. Yeah. And even if they did have to, there's still people benefiting from the fact that they gave away that money. Like, I don't understand why two things cannot be true. Why? Why do we have to highlight the negative when somebody's being highlighted for the positive? It doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't. It doesn't make anything progress, you know. So when you have people who are doing things either out of the kindness of their hearts or because they want to break in something, if it, if it's helping, I don't give a shit. As long as you're not hurting anybody and you're not negatively you're not affecting. Away. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, definitely Joe Rogan's podcast is always going to be number one because that's honestly that was my introduction to podcasts. Um, how long ago? Like five years ago, six years ago, maybe. I feel like I was about six or seven years in, thanks to the uh, Combat Jet podcast. Yeah, um, I'd love to be on Brilliant Idiots just because they're, they're funny. Um, I'd like to be on um some political podcasts just just to because they know more I'm, i mean i'm not i'm not that savvy in the world of politics but i feel like i just as a basic human being i know right from wrong and everybody like the politics are just they're just so complex that i'd like to be there to express almost as a as a representative of people who would ask a question but because they're because of those hosts being in that space, those questions don't get answered because they already know, you know, like really simple questions like like why the electoral college? Like I know now, but, you know, stuff like that. So um, I'd like to be on those types of like the Rolling Stone podcast. It's um, useful idiots, not brilliant idiots, but useful idiots with Matt Taibbi. Um, Jimmy Dore show is great. Um, yeah. Podcasts like that. I just. 
Now, what are some startup podcasts that you feel like people should be paying attention to? And that could be some with local people that you know, or it just could be some that haven't seemed to caught the fire to be on a Joe Rogan level yet or a Brilliant Idiots level yet. So I was a guest on what what podcast? The Basement Binge. Yes. Is that the movie review guys? Mm-hmm. Yes. I remember that one. They were, they were that really good. That was a really good podcast. It sounded great too. Yeah. For it being, uh, that was your first uh, audio, like, because uh, they, they're from where? Utah yeah, that was, they're from like Utah. That, that yeah. was a remote podcast. They were great. Um, so basement binge. I think people, if you like pop culture, the the host, he is like a, a um, he's a movie buff, and I think he went to school for cinematography, or or uh, directing. I, I forget exactly, um, but he speaks a lot on the movies, not only on the plot and um, the way it's it's written, but on the way it's shot, and he he just has a different appreciation of those movies. So. If people want to go check that out, that's that's a really good podcast I'd recommend. Um, and I had Gil on my podcast. She is a recovering alcoholic. And um, she is also a biologist and a uh, she has her master's in chemistry, I think. But she's a very intelligent person. And her podcast is called Sober Powered Podcast. And she talks about her struggles with dealing with being an alcoholic and how what what I liked about her podcast was she's a very educated person and people who think addiction isn't a, isn't a disease, a disease, but not only isn't a disease, but it's a disease that poor people get or, you know, less lesser educated people get. Um, it's not. And she goes into the biology and the you know, chemical makeup of how things change in your body when you get addicted to something and all the things that is that's going on. So I think that's a really good podcast when you want to understand, like, just the way just the way your body changes. It's it's not just a choice. I don't understand why that's still a discussion. So. We spoke on uh, what, what other podcasts you would like to get into and whatnot, which others, uh, you know, people should be paying attention to. Now, uh, one thing I want to ask you with this, uh, obviously, the impact that Corona has had, I feel other than ob- the obvious effects that are negative and, you know, things that have been happening around the world. I think it's been really big for and progressive for people who are doing podcasting because we have expanded on technologies like you were just saying with the remote podcast Um, do you feel like that's something you're going to be involving yourself into a little bit more? Yeah, for sure. The minute, the minute you do one thing like a remote podcast, like you can do it with anyone. I had, uh, I had the people from the one circle, um, uh, forgive me. I forget her name, but, um, we did a podcast on basically the, the other hundred. That's what it was. The other hundred. Where they instead of Forbes one the Forbes one hundred list mm-hmm. is the hundred list of people doing positive things in their areas, stuff like that. The 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 woman I talked to, Jacqueline Jacqueline Ping, Ping she was she's in Malaysia. I wouldn't yes I, I wouldn't I ever be able to do that. You know I beg the differ. You did podcast from Japan, right? But with us, <laughs> I wouldn't ever be able to have a prior news reporter who was on TV in Malaysia on my podcast, talking about positive people around the world doing Mm -hmm. positive things. So, you know, because of coronavirus, I was able to do that. The basement binge was the first, you know, remote podcast. But since you did the first one, you know, you can do another one and you learn what the tricks of the trade, like what works, what doesn't work, what's the best audio quality you can get. So, So, as I'm sure we're probably nearing our end, right? Pretty much. One of my final questions would be to kind of remix your own thing and ask you, are you humble? Are you happy? And how do you pay it forward? Um, I I would consider myself humble. Um, I'm confident, but I'm not cocky. Um, I am happy. I'm actually extremely happy. Um, There's things I always want to change and you know, as a human being, I think we always want more, but not for nothing. I am very happy. I'm very happy in my 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 situation here in California. 
I'm happy in my marriage. I'm happy in my life with my friends. I'm happy with this podcast. 